Okay, now before you click refresh and go to the next page, when you refresh this page, it's gonna take you to another website that's got a vulnerability. Let me explain what that vulnerability is and how you can exploit it. Now, if you'd like to skip this, just go to the web page and experiment with it without me explaining it, then you can do that. However, in order to get back to this video, what you're gonna to have to do is clear your cookies and then visit the website again. As soon as you have that cookie, it's gonna redirect you to that next page. This website will allow you to inject a URL encoded pickled object. Now, what is a pickled object and why do you care about this? Just about every programming language out there supports this concept of what's called serialization. Serialization is where we can take a variable that's in memory and turn it into a string. And then we could store that string inside of a database, transmit it across a network, or put it in some place outside of the computer's memory and then load it back up again. JSON or JavaScript object notation is one example of serialization. We take a Java object and turn it into a string that represents the values that are in that object. Python, like most languages, supports serialization, but it does it through a module called Pickle. Pickle is the serialization, deserialization module that comes with Python. And Pickle has a unique function to it that makes it vulnerable to certain types of attacks. As a matter of fact, this vulnerability was used very recently to compromise some large language models. Several AI infrastructures were compromised because one of the modules that's used in AI implementations is a module called PyTorch. And PyTorch heavily relies on serialization through the Pickle module. So let's take a look at what serialization is and how it works. Okay, so here I'm gonna start Python on this Linux system. Let's just create a variable x that's equal to the string test. Now, if I wanted to transfer this from this Python process to another Python process or store it in a database or store it on my hard drive or something like that, then I would need some way of taking the contents of that variable and, well, storing it. How do I get it out of the computer's memory into some kind of a transferable format? Now, I'm not talking about transferring the string test. I'm actually talking about storing the variable, the contents of the variable, which in this case is an entire Python string object. What I could do is I could import pickle, and then I could call pickle dot dump s, dump to a string, the contents of variable x. This creates this byte string that contains the object that is stored inside of variable x. Now I can take this byte string and just copy it to my clipboard. And then I could come out here to another window, say Python on Windows. Notice this is Linux here, I'm at a PowerShell prompt, so my host operating system. And I'll launch Python on Windows. Now, the way you launch Python on Windows is to use Py, P-Y, the Python launcher. So this finds the Python interpreter and starts it on my Windows system. Now I could import pickle, and I could pickle.load s, and then give it that byte string that I just copied from my clipboard. And you can see that that gives me back test. And I could assign that to a variable such as x, or a, or any other variable I want. Now that variable contains x. So in this case, I just did a very simple string. So moving it between the two hosts is well, quite trivial. Now what makes the Python implementation of serialization, the pickle module, interesting is that it has this feature where after it will deserialize the data, it will run some code to go and set additional attributes on your object and that code can be defined inside of the byte string. So that means that the person who's sending you the byte string or transmitting the byte string, or if they can get into the database where these byte strings are stored or onto the hard drive where these byte strings are stored, then they can go in and they can change these bytes. And then when you deserialize it, you'll run that code. The way that we create those objects is with a function called reduce. Let's take a look at that. I'm gonna come back over here to Linux and I'm going to say class, I'm gonna create an evil object. And I'm just gonna say this is just an object. And attached to my evil object, I'm gonna create a function called reduce. 
Now what the reduce function has to do is it has to return two values. It has to return the name of a function that you want to call. In this case, I'm going to tell it, I want you to call os.system. OS is a module that allows you to do things on the operating system, and system lets you run a system command. I want you to run os.system, and I want you to pass to it the id command. Now, this second argument has to be a tuple. Um, normally, in a tuple, you would put multiple arguments. So if I wanted to have argument 2 here and so forth, then I would put that there. But in the case of, of the system command running id, actually, let's not run id. Let's run who am I. The reason I'm going to use who am I is because who, who am I will run on both Linux and Windows. But that, again, that's going to be my only argument. This still has to be a tuple, so I'm going to have to just put a comma space. That's how you create a tuple that only has one argument. All right, so that lets me create my evil object. Now let's import the OS module so that that works. And let's say x is equal to an evil object. And then let's say pickle.dump x. And so there is my byte string that contains code where I'm going to execute this function. In this case, I'm choosing to select os.system, but the attacker could put any the name of any function they wanted to here and the arguments that they wanted to pass to that function here. And then that would get embedded inside of this code. Now, interestingly, if you look here, you can see that it's it says POSIX, which is Linux, which means even though I used a command that will work on both systems, I can't take this serialized object and then move it over to my Windows system because, let's see here, copy. Because, well, Windows is not POSIX. It's not a Linux system. So if I try to pickle.load s this string, it's going to give me an error message on Windows and say, nope. Oh, no module POSIX because it's not a Windows system. Now there are ways you could get around this. I could I could use a different module. Um, I could actually call the, uh, the the Windows module directly. I could create my pickled object on a Windows system. You see, the easiest way to do this is to well create the pickled object on the same operating system that you want to run on the target system. Now my website is running. Linux. So you're going to want to serialize a Linux object. But let's just open up a new Linux prompt. This is a new Python process that's not connected to the one we just created. And in here, I'm going to import pickle. And here, I'll do a pickle.load s. And I'm going to paste in that byte string that contains that, re, uh, that reduce function and let it unpickle this. Hmm, did, it, did you mean pickle with an L-E? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. So let's correct that, P-I-C-K-L-E, close parentheses, and there you can see that it ran my who am I command on that system. So this byte string, which was chosen by a completely different Python or process, the one in the other tab, I generated that byte string. So if I had sent this to the server, it would be running the commands that are chosen by, well, this Python process. So we can inject code into a remote system that will allow us to run arbitrary code. Now, you're welcome to try that on this particular website. Now, the website, in addition to being able to take these bytes, I would also have to then URL encode the data in order to be able to transmit it to this particular website. So go ahead and give that a try.